Hi, I'm Jill Landon, and I am the curator for Currituck Travel and Tourism. What we think about today as the Outer Banks and our beautiful, you know, beach houses and things like that, that didn't really happen until after World War II when the infrastructure with the bridges and, and the roads and stuff came in. Of course, there were always, you know, small towns that where people were coming over, but not, not like we see today. Currituck was part of the first county in northeastern North Carolina, and it included the Outer Banks. In about 1660, the Lord's proprietors, um, eight men, were given Carolina, South Carolina, North Carolina. And the first county that was inhabited was on the northeastern coast of North Carolina. Currituck was part of that. And then it was broken up into four precincts shortly after. Currituck had two big inlets. The first one, the old inlet, um, and that actually brought in a lot of navigation in. It was deep water. Um, it was close to, the old inlet was co close to the Virginia and North Carolina border, and ships could come in, this is colonial times, and go into the port of Currituck. And then that closed up because of shoaling, and meaning sandbars, sand coming in. And then a new one opened up, but by 18, like basically 1828, that closed up. Where barrier islands or barrier peninsulas, depending on when the inlets close or open. Well, the Outer Banks um, have, are ever-changing. They will be ever-changing. Um, we're basically a huge sandbar. There are two huge streams coming together. Um, the Gulf Stream and the Labrador Stream, right off of the coast, about 100 miles out. But it's, it causes shoals, and so because of that, there's all this sand and wind coming up. So it's all about geography and the ever-changing part of the sand.